Another very exciting day. It's another important landmark day that brings us closer to the, the referendum. So for those of us who believe that the best future for Scotland is as an independent country, yeah, it's a very significant day. Isn't it just dragging things out even longer? Some people complain that this has been going on for a very long time. We've got another 18 months of this yet. I think what it does is it makes the, the referendum much more imminent and it gives an added reality to it so that we, we move from the stage where a lot of the debate about uh, independence uh, has been at a theoretical level, at a process level. I think people are engaging more and more with the issues and, of course, uh, the more people connect their, their hopes and their, their dreams, their ambitions for Scotland, with the independence debate, then I think the more they'll move towards a yes vote. Is it Saturday the 18th of October 2014? Uh, I don't know, Gary. I know it's going to be the second half of next year, um, and, and that's about as much as I know, so I'll be as eager as everyone else to, to hear the date. Well, that was the date that was suggested, of course, by the Sun newspaper last year. Uh, would you like it to be on a Saturday? I mean, traditionally, of course, we vote on a Thursday in this country. Does the day itself actually matter in terms of getting people out? I don't have strong views on that, and I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll live with whatever decision that has been arrived at. I think the most important thing for me is the quality of the debate we have, and I think uh, that's what needs to, to really uh, take hold now. I think that uh, we've had a lot of uh, negativity from the, the other side, a lot of uh, attempts to uh, put down roadblocks in the way of the constitutional debate to prevent people from thinking about what kind of country they'd like Scotland to be. So I'm glad we've got the time to uh, move those roadblocks out of the way, get people to focus on what we can achieve in terms of a fairer and more prosperous Scotland if we vote for independence next year. Well, Alistair Darling made the point earlier that he believes when he asks a question of the Scottish Government, it's deemed to be negative in some way, that purely by asking the questions, you're talking Scotland down, is the phrase that's often bandied around. That doesn't bode well for a debate, does it? Well, what we know now, beyond doubt, because we have the official figures to prove it, is that Scotland's economy is, is stronger relative to the rest of the UK. So we know that. We know that we have very secure foundations on which to build. And nobody, uh, not even Alistair anymore, uh, suggests anything other than that Scotland could be a very prosperous and successful independent country. We also so, know, of course, that oil prices will be volatile. John Swinney himself yeah. said that in that report that was leaked last week. And uh, today we've got the Office of uh, Budget, uh, the Office for uh, Budget Responsibility, saying that oil prices and oil revenues mm. could be a billion pounds lower than was previously estimated. Yeah, and what a wonderful thing to have, uh, oil. But, you know, for all its volatility, what a wonderful resource for Scotland to have. It's extraordinary that people should, should suggest that oil is some kind of, of a problem for us. But I did catch a little bit of what Alistair was saying about the fact that um, you know, Scots can choose to, to change governments if they wish, but this is a once-and-for-all vote. The point is Scots don't get to change the UK government. The votes in Scotland have very little bearing on uh, the government at Westminster. So what we get, and, and the bedroom tax is the latest uh, example, we get policy engineered in London and endured in Scotland. Now we can do much, much better than that, and that's the choice we have next year. choice of two different futures, a future that we know within the UK has produced one of the most unequal societies, one of the most unfair societies in the Western world, or a different path to a fairer and more prosperous Scotland. Would you like the Scottish Government to produce their white paper sooner rather than later? Because it's going to be the end of this year before we get the kind of detailed answers that Alistair Darling believes the, the public deserve from the Scottish Government. Well, what the Scottish Government are doing is producing a series of papers between now and the publication of the white paper. And, and we're producing lots and lots of information. I mean, if you, if you go to the Yes Scotland website, we answer every question that people have given us on, on, on independence. I've always believed it's absolutely right that those of us who favour independence should explain exactly what we mean by that and set out the framework for an independent Scotland. I think there's an equal responsibility on, on the people who oppose independence to explain exactly what they mean by devolution. Uh, and every time I hear someone from the No campaign talk about this, and I was listening, listening to what Alistair said this morning, it seems to change. It's all very vague. There's no detail. Uh, I think a lot of very hard questions will have to be asked of what staying within the UK will mean for Scotland. Do you accept, though, that despite what you're saying about concrete answers, that there is a degree of uncertainty in terms of what the future holds, that you cannot answer all of the questions that people will have? Nor can anyone else, nor can anyone wherever they stand on this issue. Life is full of uncertainty. All you can do, really, is, uh, is try to get to a position where you, you make your own decisions and live by your own values. I'm a great believer in the fact that the best way to predict your own future is to create your own future, and I believe the people of Scotland next year will want to create their own future. Why then are the opinion polls not moving in your favour? People are not voting tomorrow. I think what people say to us is that they're persuadable, that they want to hear the arguments. Uh, the job we have to do is to convince them over the, the next period of time that they can have confidence in, in Scotland as an economy, as a society, 
And uh, I think if we can give people that confidence, then, uh, then they will want to be an independent country. But the figures seem pretty stubborn, don't they, in terms of the opinion polls? Is there a danger here that you're preaching to the converted, that people have already made up their minds on this issue and have had a settled mindset on this for quite a long time? No, it's a new debate for, <clears throat> for most people. This, uh, most people have not really thought through the detail of independence. So what we find, and we, we obviously do our own surveying, our own polling, is that even when people say they're definitely going to vote yes or they're definitely going to vote no, very large numbers of people in very large parts of society still say that they're open to the arguments, they're persuadable on this issue, they want to hear both sides of the case. And people will come to this debate in their own way and in their own time. I understand there are people who will probably only really engage with it a matter of weeks before the actual referendum. So the job for those of us who believe in independence is to keep making the case to keep uh, reassuring people and uh, inspiring people with what Scotland can be. How do you do that without boring people to death? Well, that's, uh, that's always a part of the challenge that we have uh, no, in the media as well. But, no, indeed, and I uh, ask that seriously yeah. because, of course, you know, we do have 18 months of this ahead of us mm. and you know, we've already had you know, a year or two of, of talking about mm. getting to this point. So there is a danger of people getting fatigue, isn't there? I think process can be boring for people. I think talking about uh, everyone's vision, people's visions of what an independent Scotland could be and should be, how we can be a fairer and more prosperous society, I think that's the stuff that excites people what life can be like for their children, their grandchildren. I think that energises people and enthuses people. So I think the, the level of uh, intensity of this debate, I think the emotional energy around it uh, will be uh, much, much stronger as we move forward, as we get closer to the date that will be revealed later today.